Well, joining me today is India's 82nd Grandmaster Pranit Vupalla. Hello, Pranit. Congratulations. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Pranit, uh, you just uh, became a GM a couple of days ago uh, by crossing the 2500 ELO mark. Which tournament did you achieve that in? Uh, in Baku Open after the eighth round. And, and I think you beat uh, Hans Niemann in that round. Uh, yeah. And so you beat your first 2700 rated player. Uh, well, it's uh, second actually. Second? Who was like the first I... one? I won against Alexinko in, in BL last year. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. You've already beaten two 2700 plus GMs. Uh, I want to talk about your journey of how you became a Grandmaster and everything about, the, about it. But firstly, uh, today something very special happened uh, when you arrived back. And I want to talk a bit about it. Uh, this happened. You met the chief minister of Telangana and he promised uh, an amount of 2.5 crores for your chess. Uh, how was it meeting him? Uh, here are a few pictures. Yeah. Your entire family was there as well. Tell us a bit about that experience. Yeah, it was uh, it was great. Like, uh, like we got a call from the CM office in the morning. Uh, like I said, like, the same one to like meet us. Mm. Then like uh, we weren't uh, like expecting like two point five crores. Mm. Like we thought, uh, like we expected some financial uh, support. Uh, mm. Yeah, he was like very nice. And then like uh, he asked like how much it would like cost in. The, like next few years to be like something like super gm or something high and yeah there like he said something like maybe two crores or could be more uh, in the next few next few years and he said okay i'll give like 2.5 crores wow that would mean a lot of uh motivation yes or does it yeah. does it put some pressure also uh maybe a little bit <laughs> <laughs> right but i think it's a it's a beautiful gesture and i'm sure it will help you in your chess journey uh, also there was a very nice uh, tweet that came from vishi anand who says uh -huh. congratulations to our newest entrant he has been playing extremely well in the last few months uh, how does it feel to know that a five-time world champion, Vishi is, uh, you know, looking at your games and following the way you're playing. No, I didn't uh, knew it yet you, until you showed the tweet. Really? You didn't know yeah. it? No. Wow. So, so how does it feel now that you got to see this? Yeah, it's, it's like very nice. Like, I, you know, like, I mean... The top players they, they follow also games and like uh, like some normal tournaments but uh, yeah I'm, I'm like happy yeah i had this picture of you with anand when was this uh this was in uh, grenke 2018 ah. i went for my like first europe trip i was uh, i think 1900 mm. Then I was playing in the open and he was playing in the, the master's section. Hmm. And after in the end of his round, I just went and took a picture. So you were 1900 in 2018 and now in 2023, you have reached 2500. That's like in four and a half or five years, you have gained 600 ELO points. Yeah. Take me through your journey, like uh, how did you start playing chess? Was it someone in your family already playing chess or you were the first one? Uh, like my parents, uh, like uh, they used to take me to like various other sports too. Like I used to go for tennis and swimming and some abacus and quiz things. And just like that, uh, they also put chess. 
and then i was doing like quite good in that so i continued that way how how did you start chess was it some class that you went to where you were taught uh yeah it was uh, it was some some club or something like first my dad th- taught me the rules and mm. my parents like they knew like the basic rules and they yeah, later they took me into like some like club kind of thing i went to, uh, and learned like for one month mm. uh, and then i took coaching from some junior coaches and once i got rating like around about like 1200 like from then on i went to ramraj sir i trained with him like uh, about 7 years like wow. till 2021 and and he helped you to reach like what i am level uh, yeah hmm and then i was working with uh, viktor mikhailovsky yeah it's uh, quite good yeah like he analyzes the games and all well, night nice. so he is he your current coach as well uh yeah Victor Mikhailovsky I think Victor Mikhailovsky also worked with uh, Arjun uh, yeah at some point and then uh, you began working with him so that's wonderful to know uh, that you have become a GM now um I see that you've made three GM norms uh, at three different events so let me just pull this up this was your first GM norm right yeah was it at the first saturday tournament uh yes and when was this it was uh, 2022 march 2022 and then the second one is this one i think this was a brilliant mm-hmm. event where you beat kirill alexienko who is 2708 and then mm-hmm. you also beat maxim lagarde who is 2631 that is the this is the bl yeah open this uh, like for the first time i like i won against a 2700 and it was like very nice like after the game it felt like really nice you know i have been talking to a few few of uh, our players who have crossed 2600 elo and in fact mm-hmm. they have hardly played against 2700 gms leave alone beating uh-huh. them so the <laughs> fact that you are around 2500 and have beaten two of them is just amazing uh and this one is your final gm norm this happened uh, also mm. recently yeah in formentera in formentera open in spain and uh, you managed to also score some very nice wins against uh, many strong players I was talking recently to Leon Mendonca and I was doing his interview and he said that uh, he was pretty sure that you would become a GM and you would go mm-hmm. way further now because whenever he's played against you he's felt your strength and I think this uh-huh. this would be true for many other players as well what is your style of play and how how have you managed to improve so quickly is it only the training that you have received from these trainers or is it something that you do on your own as well like most mostly i think uh, yeah training is a uh, part of the work but also like, i'm reading some books like before lo- lockdown i i had like hardly ever read a book okay and in lockdown i was like too bored so i, I started reading some books like i read some book about magnus then i read this my great predecessors and, mm. and some a few books like about 15 or something like that 1520 15 to 20 books you just read it yeah epic okay and what's your kind of style of play i'm not completely sure about that i asked myself about it uh I thought it's kind of positional but uh, usually players disagree. <laughs> usually what? A player is uh, like disagree. I say like minus the positional style they say 
maybe not maybe you attack maybe you attack <laughs> yeah yeah i have seen some amazing attacking games by you as well should we go and look at few of your games maybe that will be able to understand your style better yeah sure okay so the first one game that we are going to look at is with grandmaster vugar asadli this is just a game that you played a week ago uh, at the baku open you are playing with the white pieces and uh, d4 you play the open sicilian takes takes and f6 knight c3 e5 we have the shweshniko knight d5 takes takes all well known theory knight e7 c4 knight g6 queen a4 bishop d7 queen b4 322 games have been played here so this is actually mm. quite well known and i believe it's also been played by magnus several times uh, in this like in this game i didn't expect uh, shushniko okay like, i was mostly expecting a uh, four knight sicilian mm. and yeah he played shushniko like the first time and well, i thought okay just play the normal line. like the line i usually play and let's see right you played bishop e3 here and he just went f5 yeah f5 i didn't remember this move and okay i thought it should be either a big mistake or i forgot something and maybe it's like unclear okay and... what should he have played but instead of f5 um the normal a6 they play a6 knight c3 then think as a5 i had a game against uh, pregnant and then uh, norway open this mm. way right yeah i see that so he played f5 and now yeah. you yeah but... uh, it's not uh, wrong in any way i think f5 or simply i didn't knew the move <laughs> so you thought let me punish it yeah i mm. thought for some time and yeah when queen a5 seems to work mm. so maybe f5 is a big mistake uh did you check with the engine later uh yeah so yeah, after it... the game i check uh okay queen a5 it's um, like after f5 if white plays the best way he gets like 0.6 or something mm -hmm. queen a5 is like 0.2 so it's uh, dubious but he didn't knew my move and so he blundered immediately he played b6 uh, yeah. what should he have played is it, i mean we we'll look at that move but your threat is knight c7 I think uh, king f7 he should have wow but but doesn't that lose a pawn at the very least or is uh, playable so then queen c8 mm and next some bishop b5 and it's not so clear to me all right so he played b6 yeah. so after king f7 like before queen a5 I was also thinking about king f7 I didn't want to take the pawn, but uh, I thought, okay, if the king moves so early, then it should be bad. I thought. So b six was played instead of king f seven, which was actually the best move, king f seven. But he played b six, and now maybe people can find the move that you played because it was a very nice move. <clears throat> so what did you play here, Pranit? Yeah, I mean, this bishop takes b6. Wow. Like he played b6 like really quickly. He then just uh, then saw bishop b6 and after I played, he he thought for like 30 40 minutes. Oh my God. So now he can take with the queen or with the pawn or he can take the knight. So if he takes with the pawn. Yeah, queen a8 and knight c7. and the knight is also 
not trapped because it's coming out from here yeah uh and if he takes with the queen it's still the same thing take take and check and it's also so he played bishop b5 and now you played this move queen takes b5 check king e7 bishop goes back you exchanged king f6 and you are a pawn up, right? And this should be completely winning, right? Yeah, this should be. I thought this should be like easily winning, but uh, like after a few moves, I got some practical problems. Like I think there were like the much better ways to win, probably. Mm. But okay, here I just thought like Bishop effort just had to be winning. Right, and your rook is very active. Your pawn yeah. up. Check. But now he has some play down the e file. The, the important thing is your bishop controls the e2 square, so he can't come in. Yeah, he doesn't have entry squares, but I like, started to get worried around somewhere on this point. Like maybe I'll get g5, g4, and some kind of counter play. Right. So you started your own play with a4. Uh, yeah. Bishop d3. Bishop d4. Bishop d3. <clears throat> g5. H3. H5. A5. King e5. Rook c4. And he played king takes d5. So he won a pawn here. Okay, I thought uh, before playing a5, I saw um, I saw king e5, but I just thought rook c4, king d5, rook d1, I'll just uh, I get the bishop, like bishop f1, and uh, let's say king e5, bishop f1, the bishop is struck. Ah, right. So even if he breaks the pin, this is very good because this is trapped. Yeah. So, and, like, only after like, he took the pawn, I think king takes d5, I saw that uh, like in this position he can play rook d8 and after if bishop f1 he can play rook e2. Rook e2, wow. Take, take, rook, ah, uh, you can't play rook d2 because it'll take, take and take on c. Yeah. Okay. And it's not easy to play as white here. And c4 is hanging, so... King B3. So, yeah, like group K3 or group B2, and I just lose the piece. Yeah. So, you played this very nice move B6, and I think this is one of the main reasons why you like this game. Uh, yeah. I mean, here after group D8, I thought for like uh, like 30 minutes or something. Group like B. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, after rook e8, after he played rook e8, like uh, before playing b6. Yeah. Like I had, he had like around 20 minutes, I had 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of time and like I was trying to find a way to get something immediate. And yeah, after like, after some time I found b6. A lot of time I was like rechecking some lines and yeah, it worked. And if he takes here, uh, rook d4 and uh, bishop b5. Check. And this is hanging. <laughs> so b6 he took, king takes, gave a check, king goes back. And now, uh, if he had taken on c4, I believe you would have gone c7. Uh, oh, sorry, b7. Okay. No, king c4, rook c1. Yeah. Um, and then, like, okay. If, like, whatever he does, like, bishop c3, then takes, takes b a7. Wow. While if, like, king moves, then b7, rook e8, rook c8. Yes. And... If, uh, if rook c3, just uh, like 
take take king c2 a b6 and a6 wow that's some amazing uh, calculation because now a7 is coming up so in the game he played a b and yeah. you took here in my calculations i was like mostly worried about like this line ab6 hmm the one with king c4 i saw pretty quickly that it wins after rook c1 yeah but after ab6 i wasn't uh, sure about the rook ending so you took 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 here rook c7 yeah king c2 check king c4 take <clears throat> yeah. I think here the game ended, yes or yeah, yeah, here he resigned. He resigned the game. Because you are completely winning in this rook end game, you have an extra pawn plus this passer and so it's uh totally winning. So yeah. it was a very interesting game with some good opening prep and then some very decisive play. in the middle game let's have a look at one more game of yours pranik yeah. not maybe the full game but we can look at the critical moment this was against uh, sanal wahab and this was also played in baku open just uh, two rounds ago or a few rounds ago yeah and you are playing with the white pieces here so should we quickly go through the game it was a semi slow uh, yeah. which converted into queen's gambit declined he takes takes how did you assess this position better for you uh, like i knew this position already I you knew it. How? I prepared it like before the game. Wow. Like he mostly plays uh, bishop e7 line against uh, bishop g5 so so I checked it. Okay. So now uh, you played queen c2. He castled. Give a check and put your bishop on f5. Knight f6, rook f3, g6, and now you took here. Wow, that must not have been an easy move to find, yes? Or was it? Uh, well, until rook f3, I I knew already. Mm. Like I, I was just checking with the engine before the game. I thought like, uh, I checked like what if g6 and things, and it showed this idea. Okay. Takes an ID five, and I knew this is like slight plus. And mm. like during the game, I wasn't sure if it's like exactly this position I checked or not. But uh, I thought this idea should still work. Okay. So you took here. He took back. Yeah. And now you played this very important move, ID five, attacking G six, and the thing is. one uh, two of the three pieces are going to be for pork uh, regardless so queen e6 you took king g7 took, took. how did you assess this position you have two pawns and a rook for two minor pieces um i thought it should be slightly better for white okay i'm not sure if, if i can win this like it's uh, double edged i thought mm Okay, so he went. Or, yeah, I knew like I had to like keep my pawn on f three to stop knight e four, knight g four ideas. Hmm. And yeah, I was in general trying for like e four. And okay, at the point when I played like rook f c one, yeah, I I knew the move, but. I wasn't sure why rook f c one why not rook a c one. Hmm. I was like thinking about it sometime. Then I thought like, uh, like in the later position maybe like something like a four and stuff like that. 
Mm. The the rook can come useful on the f5. Yeah, for sure. So here uh, the game uh, just to go back. He took uh, here, took rook a seven, rook g seven, and you played e four. He went to h4, 5, knight moves here, and you have just these central avalanche of pawns coming over black pieces, and also his bishop is very passive. So knight f4, but now this gets pinned here. So uh, queen at 6 queen f2 look here and now this very calm little move king h1 so that there's no check on h3 yeah king g8 g3 wow that was a brave move okay like in advance i saw like something like rook b7 should work okay and like when the position came I thought if there's a much more forcing solution, then I'll just go for it. True. G3, F takes, uh, H takes, Queen takes, King H8, and after Rook takes Bishop, he just resigned. Um, I think you can take on F4, yes, now? Uh, no, I think the game continues. Ah, the game continued, huh? Yeah, play rook f4. Okay. Uh, rook h7. Then uh, rook, think, uh, rook f6. Okay. Queen, queen g7. We play the queen. Okay. I think I play rook g6, okay. queen f8. Just a second. Yeah, but with this e5 pawn, it's a very strong position to be in. Ah, no, after rook h7, I played e6. Yeah. Ah, e6. Ah, e6 and then queen g7. Okay. Um, and then rook g4. Queen f8, uh, queen e5, rook g7, and rook takes, and he resigns. Ah, because if queen takes, you're going to just push the pawn. Yeah. Wow, that was a very interesting game, and as you said, you play as per the demands of the position, so it's very difficult to know whether you are an aggressive player or a positional player. Yeah. Pranit, uh, one question that I wanted to ask you is why are there two R's in your name like Pranit? Why not just I'm not, one? I'm not sure. Like when I was like small, like they just kept some kind of numerological order or something. Okay. And that's how you uh, got that name with two R's. Yeah. I mean, one R is simpler. But... <laughs> Okay, that's how it is. Okay. Um, let's also look at one small, uh, another game that you played. And this one was against uh, Vishak, who is a strong grandmaster from India. Okay, so you are playing now with the white pieces e4 e5 e5 Rui lopez and the chigorin variation this was all well prepared by you uh, yeah Bishop at six. 
seven. Take, take. What is happening in this position? It seems like black has a very strong center. And also, yeah. if his king moves in, uh, would be pretty safe there. Yeah, it looks like that, but uh, the typical like Chigor in position. Mm. If he pushes e4, then like, bishop e4 takes, takes. And that's like plus one for white. Here, yes. Uh, no, bishop takes, not okay. knight takes. Bishop e4, f4, e4, uh, rook e4. Okay. And uh, white uh, doesn't have anything like direct, like king h8, queen e2. And then, like something like rook d1. It's just that the the a5 knight can't come into the game quickly. Right, that's a huge compensation because you are, um, you know, that game that knight is out of the game. Yeah. So you have. But he went king h8, b3, queen g8. Queen D2. And now came the move F4. Well, you get a very nice square for your knight, but look at uh, how your bishop on H6 is out of the game, and also there are there's bishop takes H3. Were you worried about this or you had calculated? I mean, like at this point, I had like before playing Queen D2, I had uh, calculated. Okay. So you. By the way, here, after take, you went knight fg5, attacking the rook and the bishop. Yeah. So takes, takes, back here. And now you took on uh, h3. He tried to win back the piece, but yeah. Yes. This king is too open. And you kept the queens on the board, which is a very smart move. I'm bringing the rooks and then taking on g5. Um, yeah, it just this position just crumbled, yes? Yeah, uh, I think it, this position is uh, winning anyway. But... Uh, think uh, after bishop h3, knight f g5, I saw he had some defense there. Yeah, it's uh, bishop f5. Yeah. And then knight f7, queen f7. And here there's, uh, like if I play bishop g5, he can go like bishop e4, bishop e7, and knight a c4 would move. Wow. It's like take take queen queen c1, bishop c2, queen c2, queen e7. And this is uh, better for black. Right. And the knight is beautifully placed and you, pawns are also very nice, but... Yeah, so... After queen takes f7, I shouldn't play bishop g5. I uh, should play bishop takes f4. Ah, yeah. Uh, up in the bishop f5 line. Yeah, bishop f5. And takes takes, and here bishop f4, and uh, this is equal. Got it. So he took. Bishop takes knight b7 and uh, I just took it. And your king is slightly exposed, but uh, I think it's nothing to worry about. It seems and, uh, his king is uh, more exposed. More exposed, yeah. And you bring the final piece into the attack. Wow, what a game by you. I think uh, it's just over because now there are 
three pieces in the yeah. attack and also the queen can join in yeah well that was that was some uh, amazing games that that you have played uh, pranit uh, it was uh, very nice what is next for you now um i think i'll play asian continental in kazakhstan okay so that would be an important uh, event for you uh, what about your um, role of your family in your chess journey could you tell us a bit about that i have a very nice uh, picture of you with your family it's like uh, going down the memory lane here you are on the left uh the right you are on the right and who the one that's your the teddy bear ah okay and the one on the left is your brother yeah ah okay and w- could you tell a bit about the role of your parents your brother in your in your family overall yeah they were like very helpful i mean like my dad used to come uh, with me to the tournaments mm um uh, like since i was uh, like small like since under 8 some asians or since that time okay and yeah my family was yeah quite supportive mm. and you are also studying right you are only in the 11th grade uh yeah what are you studying like uh, do you have some favorite subjects or uh, something that you want to pursue uh no <laughs> like, i don't have like a favorite subject like, like i would like to just go in chess okay like okay it's like uh, uh the 10th when i was in 10th like it was this covid pass hmm. like i studied for it but uh, anyway the exams didn't happen it's <laughs> that's good for me right but now uh, do you go to school regularly uh no uh, only at exams and what's the name of your school uh it's uh, vishwa chaitanya uh, junior college okay so so they are supportive of your chess uh yeah very interesting uh prani this uh, you know in general if you look at how the trend is with many many young talents that are coming up from indian chess i'm sure you've played with many of them you yourself are a rising talent what do you think uh, is needed now for you to sort of reach up towards the 2700 mark or you know go towards 2600 and so on have you thought about this i think i should like just be working like i like i like to just read books usually like on some like history stuff on world champions and things like that like okay some uh, some coaching some go, some daily practice mm-hmm. and i need to play like uh, maybe a lot of tournaments okay so this is uh i'll be very excited to you know follow your journey uh, and this will be very very great fun to follow it uh, pranit it was a pleasure talking to you getting to know you better your games the the way you play chess and uh, i think it's truly difficult to to know exactly what kind of a player you are i think uh, it's very right that you are a very universal player so thank you for your time and thank you for joining us yeah thank you